Hey folks, Phil Play from Bad Astronomy here, and I'm going to answer one of your questions left on my newsletter. And in this case, uh, Josh T. asks, can you recommend some things that the average person can do to help astronomers and astronomy in general, besides subscribing to this newsletter, obviously? Well, and in fact, it does help me if you subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, but in this case, there are actually a few things you can do, and it's kind of hard to help astronomers and astronomy directly. But there are ways to do it. I actually wrote a few down, and uh, one of them, uh, the, the first thing that came to mind, was to participate in citizen science programs where you can actually take data taken by uh, remote observatories or uh, astronomers or, or different kinds of scientists, not just astronomers, and you can um, analyze it yourself and, and participate in a group project. And that actually helps astronomy. A lot of the stuff can get published, in fact. And there are a couple of places you can do that. One is called Zooniverse, and another one is CosmoQuest. Both of these are really good. I'll have links to them in the uh, comments to this video on YouTube, as well as in my newsletter. Uh, a lot of people do that kind of stuff. You can identify which way galaxies rotate. You can identify craters on other uh, worlds, the moon, Mars, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff out there, and it turns out it's pretty fun to do. And sometimes, like I said, this stuff gets analyzed by professional scientists, and it gets published. Um, the, the good thing here is that a lot of this stuff is important to science, but it's hard for scientists to do it themselves or, uh, or to fund that sort of thing. So these citizen science projects really can help. It turns out uh, it doesn't take a lot of training or a lot of effort to do a huge amount of work, and that creates a gigantic database of basic measurements, and that's really, really helpful. Uh, another one is you can find uh, astronomers or scientists on Twitter and follow them, talk to them, support them. When they do something cool, say, hey, good job, because I'm here to tell you doesn't happen too much on social media that, for instance, I get sort of that support or any other scientist that I know. And I mean, it does happen, uh, but, you know, you get a lot more negative comments is, is what I'm saying here. Uh, another thing is to find a local university or a local observatory and just look that up online. Uh, see if they have a public lecture series. See if they have um, an observing night and go and do that. A lot of observatories will let you donate a little bit of money. That helps hugely because, uh, you know, observatories are expensive to run. And finally, uh, and I, I don't mean to, to, be, uh, to sound glib here, but vote. There are a lot of candidates out there, locally, regionally, state, country, you know, whatever country you happen to be in. They don't support science that much, it turns out. And this is not just in America. This is globally. We're having this problem everywhere. People who are denying climate science. They deny that vaccines work. Some of them deny the universe is old. Mm. Uh, and so these kind of people may not necessarily support astronomy or other sciences. So um, find out about what candidates are running in your area. And I mean this you know, locally, even on a school board. The school board's important because they're deciding what kids are being taught. And as we found out um, in Texas and some other states a few years ago, uh, they get packed with anti-science people sometimes. So go out there, vote, learn about the candidates, run for office. Hey, you can do that too. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of ways so you can support science. Um, and, and, you know, you can think of other ways of doing this. Go online, see how other people are doing this. And, uh, and like I said, just simply showing your support sometimes helps a lot. Thanks.